Hello, I'm Bruce Manclark, heat pump water heater enthusiast and expert with the Hot Water Solutions Program. And I'm Wade Cohen, licensed journeyman plumber partnering with the Hot Water Solutions Program. And today Wade is going to take us through a step-by-step -step process of installing a heat pump water heater. Before we get started, are there any major differences between installing a heat pump water heater and a standard electric water heater tank? There's no major differences, but there are some minor considerations, but we'll cover those. Okay, these tanks come in, you know, a multitude of sizes. How do you go about picking the correct size? Well, the minimum requirement is determined by the local plumbing code, but once you meet that, if the current water heater has been working for you, you could stay with the same size. But if you've been running out of hot water, I'd bump up the size a little bit. So if you've got three teenagers in the house, maybe upsize one? It wouldn't hurt a bit. This is the old water heater that we're replacing. As you can see, it's rusting and starting to leak and it's, it's, it's served its time. Before we got started today, we pulled the necessary permits and permits are required regardless of who's doing the installation and they're required for all types of water heaters. In our previous discussion, Wade, you mentioned that there are some differences between installing a standard electric water tank and a heat pump water heater. What are they? Well, it's serviceability. We're gonna have a heat pump on here that's gonna need service from time to time. The one we're installing is gonna require six inches off of the wall, but that does vary, so make sure you check your installation manual. The next thing that you have to consider is airflow. Right now we're in a garage and we have plenty of good air, but we're gonna be drawing the heat out of this air and dispersing cold air. So we need to make sure that we can dispose of that. The other thing to consider is that we're also going to draw moisture out of that air and we have to dispose of that. That is what we call a condensate line. Okay, Wade, what do we got to do to get this tank out of here? Well, we need to turn off the circuit breaker for the water heater. Now I'm going to use a voltage detector to make sure that that circuit breaker was marked properly. And in this case, it was. Now we got to get the thing drained. And in order to do that, I'm going to hook a hose up to the bottom of it. And I'm going to leave the cold water on to flush any of the debris out before I shut off the water and introduce air. How long does it take to drain a typical tank? Uh, I like to see them drain in about 10 or 15, but it could be longer if there's a lot of debris and sediment buildup. Now that we've got the water heater completely drained, I'm going to remove the flex supply lines and the electrical power. Now that we've got the old unit removed, there are some things that we need to do before we get the new unit in place. The old unit had the water inlet and the hot water outlet on the top. On the new unit, those are on the side. So I have to move the plumbing for that. We also have to have the six inch distance off the wall. So I'm gonna prep for that as well. Wade, you've been very busy. You wanna tell us what you've done? Sure, like I talked about earlier, we had to move the waters from the top inlet and outlet to a side inlet and outlet. So I've moved the water piping down there. We also had to space the water heater six inches off the wall. I used construction channel to accomplish that. We've got a styrofoam pad to prevent the concrete from absorbing the heat out of the water heater and that'll help us with our efficiency. And if we were on a wood frame structure or something where water could do damage, we would use a water heater pan. We've also got seismic strapping on here. It's required here in the Pacific Northwest and all this stuff can be purchased at your local hardware store. Well, good, everything looks really great so far. What are the next steps? The next thing we need to do is run the condensate drain. Now, in our case, we have a laundry tub over here that we can disperse the water to. If we were in a basement, hopefully we'd have a floor drain, but if we didn't, we could always use a condensate pump and we can pump this to the closest drain. Now that we're done with the condensate drain, the next step would be to connect the water inlet and outlet. I never reuse the water heater flexes. It's just not worth the risk of a leak. I also never use pipe dope or Teflon tape. I rely on the new gasket that we have to make our connection. Well, you've made all the water connections. What's the next step? Well, I'm gonna turn on the cold water valve to fill this tank. Then can we hook up the electricity? Well, before we do that, we need to go inside and turn on some hot water fixtures and make sure we purge all the air out of the system and get it filled full of water. Otherwise, if we turn on the electrical connection before that, we could damage the water heater. Because I've filled the tank with water and have purged all the air out of it, now I can go ahead and make that electrical connection. Now that we've got the electrical connection complete, the last step before we turn on the power is to hook up the temperature and pressure relief drain.
Okay, Bruce, we've got the unit installed and I just turned the power on. Is there anything else we need to know? There are a few other considerations we should talk about. First one is heat pump water heaters. The default mode is called the hybrid mode. It's a highly efficient mode. For instructions on the other modes, please refer to your owner's manual. And the big difference between heat pump water heaters and all other kinds of water heaters is they move air. And because they move air, they have a filter. And that filter should be checked and cleaned approximately every three months. We really appreciate you watching. For more information, go to hotwatersolutionsnw.org.